Hello and welcome to Leading Through Crisis, conversations between European and American business leaders. This series is dedicated to facilitating conversations between business leaders and exploring how they are navigating a changing business environment. This is just a snapshot of the discussion. An audio recording of the entire conversation is available to members of the EACC upon request. Send your request with your name and company affiliation to EACC at europe-cincinnati.com. This episode's conversation was recorded in November 2020. Again, a very special thank you to our sponsors, Clark Schaefer Hackett, Bannockburn Global Forex, Frost, Brown, and Todd. And now here's your moderator, Kai Bitter, a member of the EACC Board of Directors and an attorney with Frost, Brown, Todd. Hello and welcome to Leading Through Crisis conversations between European and American business leaders. The series is dedicated to facilitating conversations between business leaders and exploring how they're navigating the changing business environment. Our guests today are Bo Easton, Director of Operations at Meyer Tool, and Antonio Pagano, Chief Executive Officer at Modula. I'd like to thank our sponsors, Clark Schaefer Hackett, Bannockburn Global Forex, and Frost Brown Todd. Because we are practicing social distancing, we're conducting this conversation over Zoom. So there may be times when you hear background noise or the occasional drop in quality. We're trying to keep this at a minimum. Also, just a quick reminder that this video is only a snapshot of our conversation. Access to the complete recording, as well as other episodes, are available for download or streaming at europe-cincinnati.com. Well, and Antonio, thank you very much for joining us today. We have two broad categories today, the first one being lo localization and, and automation, uh, and the second one, of course, being the pandemic. Let us start with localization, automation. Well, okay. what do you think, how will the market change in terms of automation given the current uh, uh, pandemic and development. I have to say that our automation and the steps we had taken to get there have <clears throat> allowed us to be successful and profitable throughout this pandemic. And there's a big turn down in the uh, commercial aviation industry. We're still doing well with the military. Um, and some of the private aviation, but uh, commercial aviation flights, I mean, there's 16,000 planes sitting on the ground that aren't doing anything. So um, the automation that we've done has allowed us to not lay off any of our employees. We've made it through this so far, um, still marginally profitable and keeping the banks happy, but uh, keeping everybody employed. And I think a lot more people are going to be looking at that going forward because, you know, now we see what can happen. It's kind of eye opening. So I, I would say there's going to be a lot more automation and a lot more companies, in, at least in our industry. Antonio, what are you seeing? Well, I totally agree with, uh, with Bo. Um, you know, we, uh, we sell. Uh, automation because our products are uh, are fully automated and and uh, you know we see we have seen recently a uh, tremendous increase in terms of demand uh, not necessarily demand of our product but you know interest from uh, from the industries on investing on automation and if you look at the big picture i think this is uh, this is absolutely normal i mean the united states is is uh, is growing as a as a market uh, for sure this pandemic uh, has accelerated and uh, and you know uh, is uh, facilitating the decision for many companies to shorten the supply chain. So this means that they have to bring back some of the operations. And you know the only way to do that in a short time and in a more efficient way is doing by investing on automation. So um, that uh, I'm. I'm I'm absolutely convinced that automation will boom in the next years in the United States. Um, I can I can see that on on our industry because you know logistics. Um, everybody's investing on logistics. So many years we have seen 
uh, all the industries investing a lot on the uh, automation based on production, which makes sense. But now everybody is also looking at the logistics because the supply chain is a, is a very important process. Yeah. Had we not invested in the automation, we would not have made it through without the layoffs. So it, it allows us to do more with less. And the idea going forward is, you know, we don't have to hire linearly and um, we can bring in more work with the same workforce that we already have. And that was crucial for this pandemic. We've talked for a long time about um, the, the shortage uh, for shop floor workers, especially for advanced manufacturing. Has the pandemic made that worse? or has it gotten better for you as an employer? Antonio? Well, I can tell you my experience. You know, uh, in the middle of, of the pandemic, uh, uh, we basically didn't do any job. But as a matter of fact, we, rest, we, were, you know, we restarted the hiring. So uh, in, the, in the last three months, uh, we have opened up for hiring, uh, particularly in Ohio, and it has been so complicated, so difficult, you know, to find to find people. Hmm. So um, honestly, uh, I don't think uh, um, uh, this situation is gonna is gonna. And, and I, I remember before the pandemic, it was it was even more difficult because simply the unemployment rate was was so low. Hmm. So I see the shortage of manpower a really big challenge in the United States in the next years. Honestly. Um, not only the not, not not only in terms of quantity, but in terms of uh, skilled and, and quality. Because uh, if you want to bring automation, you need to have skilled people. You're not you don't only have uh, have to have people. So uh, we are still a small company. We 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 employ under fifty employees between the two plants now. Uh, but I can tell you, you know, we are we we see a lot of challenges on hiring good people. Now we've been lucky so far. We, we, you know, we are working hard on training them and get them the, the, right, the right input, but it's not it easy. I agree 100%. It's, it's not easy to find um, skilled workforce, but I will say that we have quite a few applicants right now because a lot of our customers and our vending, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, our supply chain has laid off and they know that we're still hiring. So I've got a lot of people coming in, and that has been good for us, for our workforce. Well, what we have seen is that also, uh, particularly um, the area uh, close to our plant in uh, Ohio, uh, it is also extremely competitive now. So, you know, you need to get, uh, you, you need to start uh, a hiring rate pretty high now, because otherwise you, would, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't have people applying. <laughs> Yeah, the rates have definitely gone up. Mm. And it's a shame that schools don't prepare people for that more. I mean, you can get a good job um, with a middle grade pay wage without all the school loans and all the debt you're going to take on. And unfortunately, nobody's pushing the kids that way. Let's switch topics. Let's talk about the pandemic. What have you done in preparation for the second wave? The numbers don't look good. They don't. Bo? No. Um, well, on our team, we've spread everyone out. We've altered shifts. We've spread out the breaks. Um, everybody has to wear masks. Everybody has to use the hand sanitizers. Um, everybody has to do a temperature check before they come into work. Uh, and where we can, we work from home and we stagger the week. So if it's ancillary support like IT, we'll do two days on, two days off, and then we are disinfecting on Fridays. Well, what we did uh, uh, at, at Modula is basically, you know, we have put together a robust, uh, as everybody has, a robust uh, 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 um, um, protocol. So uh, we did uh, we did this on the, for the first wave, and basically we didn't change that much on the second wave. Now we have forced a little bit, 
we have uh, uh, encouraged the working from home for whomever you know is entitled to as well, the wearing mask 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 are mandatory but i can tell you we had two cases uh, one even recently last last week that it was uh, apparently everybody was worried because you know it was potentially could be a, a you know uh, potential, you know, uh, spread. But then uh, it turned out that it didn't. And, you know, myself, I was in a, in a meeting room with this person. We were wearing a mask and nobody has been infected. So what I can tell you, basically, if you use the protocol, if you use the safety measurements, if you use a mask, if you use a social distancing, those measures work. So, you know, this is something that we keep telling to every to everybody. We're not... We don't want you to wear a mask. It's not political. It's not, you know, a constriction. It's not, it's not that we want to put you in a difficult spot. You have to do that, you know, because it works. And, and we, have, we have had a proof. So um, we try to vehicle this message as, as, much, as much as possible. But sometimes it's uh, because handling with people is not like handling with uh, yeah. yeah, the masks are horrible, especially with the safety glasses and everything else, uh, everything falls up, but you got to do it. Again, a very special thank you to our sponsors, Clark Schaefer Hackett, Bannockburn Global Forex, Frost, Brown, and Todd. Thank you for joining us today. As a reminder, this is just a snapshot of the discussion. An audio recording with the entire conversation is available to members of the EACC upon request. Send your request with your name and company affiliation to EACC at Europe-Cincinnati.com.